succeed. Have faith of a mustard seed. Welcome to another segment of the Drexel SEMA show, where we encourage you to rise up and take your position. Today I'm excited, well, I'm excited with all my shows, but we have a young man here today. Um, I haven't interviewed too many young people, and I like the fact that he's a, he's a, a man, because we just finished a series on We Are The Man. And so I'm interviewing this, this gentleman. Um, his name is um, Stuart Ewing, but I'll let him introduce um, itself to you, the, the viewers. But first of all, I want to say thank you for, for being a guest on my show. I really appreciate the opportunity to, to interview. Uh, with that said, please tell the viewers who you are. Well, thank you for having me, first of all. So, it's a pleasure. Here. Um, well, my name is Stuart Ewing. I am a Turks and Caicos Islander. I am the son of Drs. Rufus Ewing and Don Perry. Um, I attended the British West Indies Collegiate for both high school and sixth form. Um, I graduated in 2015. And then after that, I pursued a bachelor's degree in biology at the University of the West Indies, Mona campus in Jamaica. Um, and then after that, I applied to the Faculty of Medical Sciences to pursue a degree in medicine and surgery. Um, a lot of academic stuff, but um, I consider myself to be a little bit all-rounded. I have hobbies and interests in things like music, um, aviation, business, um, and sports. Okay. It's a little bit about that. Okay. Well, I really want to ask you this question. I, I see both your parents are, are, are medical doctors, and are you pursuing that field? Yes. Were you under pressure to follow the footsteps of your parents, or that's something that you really want to do? I was I was pressured. But you not, were? But not by them. By other by people. <laughs> <laughs> that is interesting. Growing up, everybody they didn't even ask me what I wanted to be when I grew up. They just said, Oh, you're gonna be a doctor like your parents. It was never any choice. So I kind of rejected the idea from a very young age. Um, so growing up I had interest in things like computer science, um, aviation, engineering, mm -hmm. but medicine wasn't really on my radar until I was about eighteen. I had a a sports injury and I had to get surgery mm -hmm. on this right knee mm -hmm. and the entire process from the consultation to the surgery pre-op post-op and the physical therapy I just kind of fell in love with the whole process and I was like oh, this, this medicine thing kind of kind of interesting so I was okay. going to give it a try okay so well I mean well something good came in that incident yeah, you know, yeah definitely and, and <laughs> Well, that, that is um, that is amazing, you know, cause you and you are the only child, right? That is correct. You're the only child. Now, um, the main purpose on this show is that you you have form a, a foundation. If you right. want to talk about it, called Youth Help. Yes, the Youth Help Foundation. Okay, what is the Youth Help Foundation, or and what is its mandate? Okay, so the Youth Help Foundation is a nonprofit organization. It's, um, it was incorporated about around this time last year in both okay. Virginia and Florida. It's a 501c3 tax exempt organization. We could talk a little bit about that later on. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially, our mandate is to help support and empower young people to reach their potential um, and to be the best person that they could be. Um, we're doing this by trying to support other nonprofit organizations that provide opportunities, equitable opportunities to individuals to better themselves. So we focus in areas based in health, um, education, and literacy programs. And that's actually what the acronym HELP in the name stands for, Health, Education, and Literacy Programs. Oh, so that's okay. where the help comes from. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's something we're passionate about. We consider those things our three pillars. Um, and today in our society, it's very important to educate the young people about health education and healthy living, healthy lifestyle, having a good diet, exercising. Unfortunately, we're seeing a rise in um, children developing things like obesity, pressure, and sugar, and these things. And having a good diet and exercising at least half an hour every day help combat yeah. these things. Um, in terms of education, providing educational opportunities via programs is something that we're very passionate about. Mm -hmm. um, studies show that individuals born into the top 5% of income ranking within their society 
tend to have more access to educational programs and thus have a higher chance of becoming middle to upper class citizens and contributing more to society. So that's something that we want to make available to everybody so they could be the best versions of themselves. Okay. And then literacy programs, like I said before, is being literate is something that's very important in today's very important. globalized society. So yeah. um, mastering the basics of literacy and numeracy is something that's extremely, extremely mm-hmm. important. And even advancing way beyond that yeah. is something that is detrimental to yeah. the development. Of yeah, that is the key. You know, yeah. yeah. So we're just trying to support other nonprofit organizations who want to not only implement but maintain these kind of programs. Mm-hmm. So that's okay. essentially our mandate. Those okay. are our three pillars. Okay. And when do you plan to um, to roll out this um, foundation? So we have our um, inaugural fundraising event that's starting. In, on August 18th, is the Turks and Caicos Premier's Classic. It is a golf tournament that's happening in Washington, D.C. I did see that, yes. yes on the 18th of August. Um, I think it's a foursome scramble tournament. And it's in honor of the former Premier, um, Dr. the Honorable Rufus Washington Ewing. Um, and then after, we have a VIP cocktail in honor of the current Premier, Honorable Charles Washington Ewing. So um, during that event, the VIP cocktail will have a silent auction. Uh, we're still in the process of getting prizes and things for that, but uh-huh. I think we have some some artwork that we're trying to obtain. So if you're interested in artwork, make sure that you <laughs> go on the website, yes. um, youthhelpfoundation.org. That's H-E-L-P, foundation.org. And donate. You can contact us. We have a, an address for mailing things. You have an email address and a phone number to contact if you're interested in joining our team. And all. So that's the Youth Help Foundation. Well, that's a good start. That, that fundraising, that's a good start because... You will need money um, to get anything done. You, you, you need you need money. You need volunteers. You need all sorts of things to get things done. It sounds easy, but it's not easy getting it <laughs> off the ground. Yeah, yeah. But I want to tell you, I admire you for you know starting this program, which is desperately needed, not just in Turks and Caicos, throughout the the world. Definitely. And so I, I I admire you. Now you you talk about the acronyms for help, but but what really inspired you to to start this? Um, um, this foundation. Well, it's exactly what you said. It's a program that's needed around the world. So mm-hmm. over the years, I've realized that innately intelligent individuals, um, for whatever reason, don't have access to the educational programs that they require to be the best versions of themselves. You can hear me say that a lot <laughs> today. Um, so, and this is not something that's specific to TCI. I see it all over the Caribbean, from the Bahamas mm-hmm. to Jamaica, to Trinidad and Tobago, to Barbados, North America, Europe, Asia. Mm-hmm all over the world. So it's just something that we thought was necessary to develop so that we could make an impact, not just in TCI, not just in the region, but globally. That is awesome. I, I, I admire that. I admire that because you're also a student. Yes. And you know, you, you're you doing this while you're a student, so I, I admire that as well. Now, you said we in, in your response, so I'm assuming there are more persons involved. Yes. Who are, who are the other persons so involved. We, we have a very diverse team, both geographically and yeah, skill set as well. Um, we have individuals based here in TCI, Jamaica, Barbados, uh, Washington, D.C. In terms of skill set, we have individuals who specialize in areas of healthcare, healthcare administration, people who work with nonprofits regularly, business people, people who are involved in architecture. So it's very diverse um, sort of people. Um, but if any of you, the viewers, are interested in joining the foundation, you can go to the same website, youthhelpfoundation.org, and you can contact us and reach out. Um, but actually, two, myself and two other members of the board are going to be on CBS's Great Day Washington on July 12th to oh, wow. promote Congratulations. the Premier's Classic. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, to promote the Premier's Classic. Um, the reason why we chose the U.S. though is mainly um, we wanted to increase the opportunity for our donor pool. And in addition to that, we wanted to provide the opportunity to promote TCI on an international stage. At the VIP cocktail, Honorable Premier will have the opportunity to address the ambassadors in the DC, TCI diaspora in the DMV area, investors over there, and even future travelers to TCI. So I think it's good. Else. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, good don't... Good. The market is a lot is high is larger. You, you know, you could tap into more resources. I think it's a great idea that you're having it yeah. there in Washington. Yeah. We chose golf because um, 
I say my father and I are avid golfers. He gets really? time to golf more than I do because I'm oh, in school. Yeah, of course. But whenever I go up to visit him, when I have a break, we try and get some some hits in. Um, we've been doing it for a few years. Mm-hmm. Whether or not we're good is up for debate. But <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, you know, I I try golfing, but I just ain't got that. You know, mm-hmm. I admire people that like it. To me, it's so boring. But I, I admire people that 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 like golfing. I thought it was boring as well until I actually tried it. And it's nice to see the ball soar and <laughs> go far. So it's, it's it's a great it's a great sport. Yeah, that is awesome. That is awesome. So you have all these different persons from different um, geographical areas. Mm-hmm. So I'm assuming that your programs will not always be face to face. Well. We don't aim to put on the programs ourselves. It's more of a coordination. So our, our oh, mandate okay. is to actually support any other organizations that have projects that they need funding for. Um, I, so, okay, I got it. Yeah, so we, we don't live in an ideal world, so we don't have never-ending capital. So okay. we obviously can't support every single organization that comes right. to us. We have very strict criteria got for it. who we um, give grant money to. But the things that we mainly look for are, are the projects inclusive? Are they diversity? Mm-hmm. Are they diversity? Are they equitable? Are they available to many different people? Got it. So um, in addition to that, the organization receiving the funds would have to be able to show some sort of project data to show up, um, to account for the usage or utilization of the grant money. So that's something that we okay. require from the okay. organization. So you like your organization, like the middle the middleman exactly. where you will find the different um, groups that need help. You will coordinate it, bring them together yes. to to um, fulfill the objectives of the organization. Correct. Okay. That's very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, coordination is very good as well. You know. Now, what are some of the initiatives that you that you like to see um, take place within a year or so or, or well, two years? Um we intend to use the funds that we get from fundraising or direct donations uh, to help tackle those three things that mentioned I mean, things I mentioned before the three pillars. Right. Um, but in addition to that, we're open to other things. Um, so, if there anybody is anybody out there who has an organization you feel passionate about your cause, don't do not reach out because you're not you don't fit within those three pillars or have health in STEM. But um, we're, we're open to other things. We are looking to create a program for newborn hearing screening. For what? Newborn hearing screening. Mm. A lot of um, individuals may be born with hearing challenges and disabilities, and it's, you don't realize it. They have difficulty in school because not hearing well. So we're trying to um, coordinate with the group to come down and um, train the, the nurses within the public health sector to deliver these hearing screening tests so that we at least can identify um, if there are any individuals who have this issue, because someone asked me, I was like, well, how many people actually are born with hearing challenges? And I was like, well, we can't answer that question because we don't do the screening. Yeah. So it's just that's something important yeah. that we need to figure out. Sometimes we don't even know until it's too late when we try to figure out why exactly. the children are and it's, responding the way they're responding. It's not only hearing as well, because a lot of people who have developmental delays or learning challenges, mm-hmm. I don't want to say disabilities, it's learning challenges mm-hmm. um, that... Um, People don't realize so early diagnosis and treatment is something that's very important because the longer the individual is being treated for that um, challenge, the more skills that they can develop to help them thrive despite the challenges they will face in life. So mm-hmm. something very important. Wow, your parents must be very proud of you. That, that, that is that is Every great. Every morning when I walk into the hospital in Jamaica, my mom calls me with a new thing. Oh, we gotta do this. Oh. The foundation could do that. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, write it down. Let's talk about it. <laughs> talk about it. Now, I know you mentioned about the the fundraising mm-hmm. that will take place in March, but the, but you need funding on a regular basis to that to keep correct. the program sustainable and and, and functional. Um, so, for doing this, then, how will you deal? I mean, how does one become? How do you plan to 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 get more donors? And um, are you getting any support from any? any businesses so far here in, in Turks and Caicos? Yes, we are. So donation is primarily via the, the website. Um, okay. We try to try to do events that advertise the organization regularly. So we have a calendar of events for the rest of the year that we're still developing. It hasn't been released as yet, but it will be released via the website. Um, 
So the organization, our, our effort is to try and maintain relevancy, especially on social media, so individuals know about the organization. Um, I had mentioned the tax thing earlier. I'll explain yeah. a little bit now um, without getting into the nitty gritty of mm-hmm. U.S. tax coding. Mm-hmm. I can take a, a whole week. But um, One week. <laughs> <laughs> essentially, it means that the organization is exempt from federal and state tax in the U.S. Um, and this is good because um, organizations, individuals that donate to our foundation but have the opportunity to um, write off those donations and their tax deductions. So individuals living in the U.S. can write them off, or even U.S. citizens living here in TCI mm-hmm. who pay taxes in the U.S. have the opportunity to write off those donations and pay less tax at the end of the year. Okay. So that's an incentive that we wanted to um, develop. Yeah, and that that makes that makes a lot of sense actually. And so you say you the companies it was not incorporated in, in Virginia, Virginia and Florida, and so. And because of how it's incorporated, that's why you get the tax exam? Exactly. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, I mentioned earlier, I admire you, the fact that you are a student and you are, um, you have funded this, this organization. And how, so how do you balance, um, especially medical school, <laughs> um, well, how do you balance um, your, your studies, your time in school with doing community work? such as this? Well, medical school is challenging. I'm not going to lie. It's mm-hmm. really tough. They're, I imagine. Everybody tells you that, and even I tell people the same thing, there'll be a point in time when you're at your desk studying one, two o'clock in the morning, you'll say to yourself, boy, I heard this was hard, but it wasn't. I didn't feel <laughs> it'll be this hard. <laughs> parents told me many times, but you know, you don't really feel it until you're, you're in it yourself. So mm-hmm. I... It is difficult, it is time consuming, but one thing that I've realized is that teamwork goes a long way and the members of the board are very instrumental in helping, yeah. especially on those days that I'm stuck in the hospital, stuck in clinic or on a surgery, that they really help out and get things going mm-hmm. and keep things moving smoothly. Um, so as the Prime Minister of Barbados, Mia Mountain says, many hands make light work, yeah. but many hands also make life work. Yes. You know, it, it not only help make the task at hand easier, but it makes things in life general more enjoyable. Yeah. And there are many other sayings that are to the same effect, like, um, what is it again? It takes a village to raise a child. Yeah. Something yeah. similar like that. It takes team effort. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that I'm very yeah. grateful for. Yeah. But I just try to be very intentional with my time. Mm-hmm. Um, the little free time I do have, um, I try and sit down and do like a little yeah. brain dump and all the tasks that I have to do in one day or even a week, mm-hmm. I would write it on a piece of paper what, I'm not lying on my iPad. <laughs> okay. okay. And I would yeah. rank it in terms of um, in order of priority. Okay. And assign it a specific um, amount of time and just work on that. If it's more than an hour, I would try and do 25 minutes of intense work and then a five minute of break instead of Pomodoro technique and do that for three cycles and then take a 10 minute break and repeat. So mm-hmm. it's it's been working thus far. I've been getting good grades in school. Um, I've even started to tutor on the side. So I guess... It's been working well. Well, that's good. And, and also, I'm glad you brought that because it's important for us to find a balance in life. I, I mean, I don't think people should spend all their time studying and, and just doing one thing. I think we need to balance our, our lives. Definitely. And I think it's important for us to give back to the community, whether you are a student, whether you're working full time. And so because when you, when you leave school and you start working, um, we will want people to help with the community. So it's good you're practicing from now. Okay. And we need to encourage people, you know, to, 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 to do community involvement. Because even when looking for a job sometimes, um, employers look not just at your grades, and they also look to see what you have done as well um, in, the, in, the, in the community and other things that is able to balance, balance your time. Definitely. So I think that that's very important. Now, as we wrap up this this interview, um, um, Stuart, what advice would you give to um, the young people? Uh, we find that our young people, I mean, everybody probably is struggling, mm-hmm. but we find that there's a big issue among our young people. Um, I don't know what's happening. Uh, we see so many murders taking place. We, we see so many... Um, young people becoming parents at such a young age. Um, uh, what, what, what advice would you give to our young people? The advice that I would give is something that I always tell my friends when they're going through struggles, especially academically. Mm-hmm. It's just that um, 
You improvise, you adapt, and you overcome. You improvise, adapt, adapt, overcome. Overcome. Oh. There are a lot of times in life where we face challenges and we may have failures along the way. But there's a musician that once said that anything successful was once a series of mistakes. So don't get bogged down by things not going your way. Usually it's because you have a lesson to learn um, and you just keep on moving on. You Every failure you have is the first attempt in learning. That's what someone wants mm-hmm. as well. And you need to just analyze what went wrong. That's it. And change what you're doing. That's it. Sometimes I feel as if not succeeding or having a failure is more is, is better for you because you learn more from it. Some, Absolutely. Sometimes people are successful and they have no idea why. <laughs> You know, so you're you right. can't replicate that success. You're right. So it's very important that it, even if you have a setback, just it's okay to feel sad about it, but you know, take a minute, sit back, analyze what happened, and try and make a change somewhere. Wonderful advice. Wonderful advice. Excellent advice, actually. Um, do you have anything else you want to share before we end? Is something I haven't covered? Um, I would just want to encourage corporate TCI, um, any avid golfers in the first case, I would just do. Sign up for the Turks and Caicos Premieres Classic. Um, you can find us on Instagram at TCI Premieres Classic, I believe. That's the Instagram handle. Um, if not, if that's not it, you could find it via Dr. Rufus Ewing's Instagram. I'm sure everybody could find that. I think it's Doc R. Ewing. Um, and to donate to the Youth Help Foundation at youthhelphelpfoundation.org. Um, contact us if you're interested in joining our team. Um, and thank you for having me on the show. All right. Well, you've been watching or listening to the, the Draxwell Seema show where I was sitting with Hugh Stewart, sorry, it's in Hugh <laughs> Stewart, you know, um, who has started this foundation, Youth Help. And I, and I just love the foundation. I love the acronyms. I love, I love the objectives and the mandate that this young man is about to, to, to do for not just Turks and Caicos, for, for the whole world. And so I encourage persons to see what they can do to make sure that this foundation is successful by either being volunteers or even donating your money or or time. Because honestly, we need to help each other. And this is a great initiative that you could do to help others, to help people to be better um, or to be empowered. And this is one way to do that. So thank you for watching the show. Remember to subscribe.